and welcome to Moto News Now. It's been a little bit since I've done one of these, but it's been kind of a weird news cycle lately. Not many stories coming out at one time, so I couldn't really do a Moto News Now video. But today, today we got a few stories for you, both in the U.S. and in the World Championship. We got uh, Phoenix Honda's Dylan Fernandez. He will be out for a second weekend in a row. We'll get into that. Then we have... In the MXGP stuff, uh, standing contract Honda's Alberto Ferrado. We had high hopes for him, but he's out with a really bad injury right now. Uh, then we're going to look at something that's a little up in the air, but there was a patent submitted by Yamaha for an electric bike, and I think it was an electric... I don't remember what it was. I I'll show you the plans in a minute. I'll show you the paperwork. Uh, anyway, then finally we're going to end it with Ducati disclosing their game plan on the 250 program. We already know what they're going to do with 450. Now we know what they're going to do with the 250s. All right, let's get into it. First, let me tell you about our sponsor, Blood Lubricants. They have everything you can need, premium oils and lubricants. You, for motocross, all the way to your daily driver, they got basic engine oil for that. Let me show you what they got. They got oil, basic oil, premium stuff. They got chain lube. They even got bike wash. They have everything, man, and it's all premium, high-quality stuff. Support the companies that support the sport, and Blood is certainly doing that. They sponsor many privateers. They got John Short, and of course, they sponsored me in my channel. So head to bloodlubricants.com and use my code TMN25 to get 25% off site-wide. Go grab some stuff. All right, one final thing. If you haven't already, head to my website. I've only got a few more of issue number seven copies left you guys went absolutely nuts with this stuff almost sold it out so if you can sell out the rest of these before issue number eight comes out that'd be awesome huge thanks to all of you who already bought one if you want a copy of issue number seven with ap on it head to the website now they're running low all right let's begin today's show with dylan fernandez and his illness fernandez riding for phoenix racing honda in the monster energy supercross series is absent for seattle supercross this weekend the french rider is set to miss his second consecutive race due to an ongoing illness last week he talked about it but he didn't go into details this week the team announced this on social media saying quote not the post we want to make dylan fernandez will miss seattle as well he had blood work done and is dealing with an infection in his lung He's making progress, and we will see you guys in St. Louis when he's 100%. So the team didn't get into much detail on that, but Ferrandez took to Instagram himself to provide a little more detailed uh, press release of sorts. Uh, he said, quote, unfortunately, I will not race again this weekend. I got sick after round six and training, or and with training and racing every week. It turned into a lung, a lung infection. Man, I can't talk today. Uh, it was not possible to ride the last two weeks, but I feel better now. Still not 100%, but getting there slowly. I hope I can come back to normal training routine for next week and be back at the race as quick. Honestly, I think that's a smart play. Uh, when you're training all week and traveling to these races and then racing hard on the weekend, it, something like that, like a lung infection, that would not have the time to heal in that time period. So smart move by them, honestly. Uh, following 10 rounds of the 450 Supercross series, Dylan Fernandez holds 10th position in standing still with 107 points. Uh, his performance in the first nine rounds was marked by results of 10, 7, 5, 6, 6, 9, 7, 6, 22, 8, 22. If he didn't have those two dead last finishes, man, it'd be an incredible season for him. It sucks to see that and him missing a couple rounds. But overall, I think it's a good start on the Phoenix Honda team. Uh, comparing his progress this year with previous seasons, Fernandez appeared to be more at ease on the Honda compared to the Yamaha back last year and the year before. Uh, however, his results... From the first nine rounds of 2023 were his third worst to date. In 2022, he ranked eighth with 137 points and ninth in 2021 with 121 points and ninth again in 2023 with 107 points. In contrast, during the same period in 2023, he was in 16th position with 56 points, having missed several rounds due to injury. So 2024 don't look too bad with all that said. But yeah, sucks to see Fernandez sick. I was rooting for him this year. I want the underdog to do good, especially a guy like him finishing second in pro motocross and losing a factory deal. Like, that's insane, man. But hopefully he comes back. I think he'll do good this summer, and once he learns his Honda, there's a lot more to come from this guy. All right, on to an MXGP story. Alberto Ferrado, LB, they call him. Uh, his season has not commenced as planned, that's for sure. Prior to the opening round in Argentina, he underwent an operation and attempted to race, but ultimately withdrew. I spoke about that injury before. Ferrado, uh, I think it was Hawkstone? international 
I don't know 100%. Don't quote me on that. Uh, one of the preseason races, Ferrato went to, and he had a really, really bad get off in the sand, kind of flew over the bike and landed on a fence almost. Uh, but he had a giant, like, hem- hematoma sort of thing on his leg, and they ended up having to cut it open and remove all the blood. So the beginning of the season didn't go to plan at all. But um, after the operation, he attempted to race in Argentina, and it didn't work. He withdrew. Um, He aimed to make a comeback at round two in Spain. However, a significant crash during his preparation on Wednesday resulted in eight broken ribs, a collapsed lung, or and a collapsed lung. I thought there was something else. Nope. Uh, Consequently, Ferrado will be sidelined for a very long time. This is going to be a long recovery. Uh, Collapsed lungs are no joke. Actually, I had to look it up quick. That ain't that bad. A collapsed lung recovery time, according to asthmaandlung.org.uk, is only one to two weeks. That's pretty insane to me. Uh, And then broken ribs at least six weeks. So he definitely is going to be out for a while. Um, The standing contract Honda team expressed their disappointment, stating in a press release, quote, unfortunately, Alberto Ferrado had a big crash today while preparing for the Spanish GP and suffered eight broken ribs and a collapsed lung. He's in Herentals Hospital where he gets the best care. When it rains, it pours. As a result, the team now is going to decide whether just to recruit a fill-in rider or concentrate solely on uh, the impressive performance of his teammate, Paul Jonas, and uh, Ferrado's return. Um, They haven't mentioned anything about a fill-in rider. I don't really know if they're going to or not. At this time last year, Ferrado had already secured himself as a top-10 contender, and we expected at least that from him at the beginning of this year. Uh, But considering how fast he was in the latter half of the season last year, we expected more out of him, honestly. Um... Hopefully he heals up quick. We love him. We can't wait to see him back in action this summer. And yeah, heal up quick, man. All right, it looks like another manufacturer is entering the electric motocross industry. Yamaha has recently submitted patents for an all-electric motocross bike, as leaked images suggest. I will show you that in a second of a patent. Uh, The Japanese company has already produced the TYE Trials e-bike, currently competing at a professional level. The new model, potentially named YZE, is expected to enter competitive racing for motocross. While testing the Y or TYE, Yamaha realized that adding a flywheel and a traditional clutch gave the motorcycle much better performance during slow speed maneuvers and instant acceleration during race starts. For the dirt bike, Yamaha has used a torsion damper with the gearbox as the use case for the two motorcycles are different. Uh, the result of doing so is better throttle response again, uh, as racing in the dirt requires variation in the acceleration and the key to the smooth delivery. Yamaha hasn't disclosed any details about the battery pack, specifications, images. Uh, The focus is the propulsion system. There is no information about Yamaha's launch plans for the motorcycle, but it's anticipated they will be releasing some details in the coming months. Um, As you can see on screen, this is the leaked patent image for the system I just mentioned. I'm pumped to see it. Uh, I love the electric bikes. I have one myself. Most fun I've had in a dirt bike in my life. Obviously, there's some work that needs to be done, and it's not. Everyone says, oh, the races are going to suck with electric bikes. They're not going to do a full electric pro series. I mean, MXGP is doing that, but that's a sub-series. It's not the main series. So, I love it. I'm excited to see more bikes. Not only are they a fun bike, but they give riders more freedom. There's no noise restraints. You can ride wherever you want, ride when you want. Overall, I'm just pumped to see more manufacturers entering the e-bike scene. All right, the final story of the day, Ducati. We have heard their plan for the 450, the Desmo 450, and testing it uh, throughout 2024 in the Italian Championship. But what about the 250? They've mentioned it, but they haven't given us a solid plan on that yet. Well, before Ducati made their motocross debut at the opening round of the Italian Championship, Paolo Ciabatti spoke to the media and confirmed in 2025 they will race the MX2 Italian Championship with a 250 machine. This will likely see them race the MX2 World Championship in 2026, provided everything goes according to plan. Uh, Ciabatti also confirmed they are aiming to contest the AMA Supercross Series in 2026 as well. Ducati also hopes to make the bike available to dealerships between May and June in 2025. I'm assuming they're talking about the 450 with uh, making it available in 2025. Paolo Ciabatti said... In an interview at the Italian race, quote, in 2025, we will participate in the Italian championship in the MX2 class. The work has already started. In the meantime, we continue to pursue the objectives already declared, continuing continuing the development of the 450 Desmo through testing and participation in the MX1 championship to arrive in MXGP in 2025 with the Matty team, which will manage the bike. 
We also aim to take part in the U.S. Supercross in 2026. As regards to production, we will ensure that the 450 is available in dealerships between May and June of next year. On top of that, he gave us an outline of Ducati's plans and what their goals are. So 2024 is the, to develop their 450 machine uh, in the Italian Championship with Lapino. And although Cairoli didn't race this weekend, they didn't rule it out. They said he may race in future rounds. Now, 2025, they want to contest the full MXGP World Championship. And then in the Italian Championship, focus on the MX2 class, the 250 bike, and developing that. Then on to 2026, they will contest in the AMA Supercross Series with the 450 bike and enter the MX2 World Championship with the 250 bike. And then that's where they ended it. But I'm assuming 2027, they will enter with the 250 bike in the 250 class here as well. I'm pumped to see it. I'm glad more details are coming out about Ducati's plans, and it seems that it's all going well for them so far. I mean, they finished second overall in their very first race, so incredible. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Let me know what you guys think about Ducati's plans. All right, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to head to our sponsor, bloodlubricants.com. Use my code TMN25, and head to my website, Snag a copy of issue number seven. I've only got a few copies left. It's running low. Head to the website and snag a copy before issue number eight comes out. Anyway, both those links are in the description down below. The code's down there, everything you'll need. But yeah, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.